So I want to preach a little differently today, and I'm going to get the ladies board, well, some of the, the ladies board and Sister Reverend Lorraine to be involved, and so they're going to join me. So I'm going to preach with a panel today. Okay, it's Shiloh. We don't do anything normal. Um, so come, I, you know, I've already paid you. We've signed the contract, so take your places. Brother Kalen will set you up with mics and all that good stuff, um, because what I want to do is share a point, and, and then you, and they will... They will sort of, you know, talk and, and it's going to be good. Everybody's good? Yes? Okay. We're all set? Okay. I'm going to let him give you your microphones and, and, um, and. There we go. All right. So, Father, as we get into the word, um, we do it differently, but it's your word. Um, there are still truth. There are still life. Mm -hmm. And I pray that you would speak to us in this moment. You speak to someone, whether man, woman, mother, father, speak to each one of us, Lord. Um, just have full control, especially of this moment in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I am going to um, read a passage from Isaiah chapter um, 38. Isaiah chapter 38. Um, verse 14. But before I do that, um, the topic for the occasion is very fitting, um, is when motherhood gets overwhelming. <laughs> when motherhood gets overwhelming. When motherhood gets overwhelming. And so if, you know, you can substitute motherhood for life, when life gets overwhelming. Um, and so here's what it says in Isaiah chapter 38, Verse 14. This is the NLT version. Delirious, I chattered like a swallow or a crane, and then I moaned like a morning, morning dove. My eyes grew tired of looking to heaven for help. I am in trouble. Lord, help me. Um, here is how the, the New Jerusalem Bible translates that passage. Lord, I'm overwhelmed. Please come to my help. And I think we can all relate to that part. Um, we may not picture, it's hard to picture the dove, maybe not everybody is, you know, imaginative that way, but I think we can all relate to, Lord, I'm overwhelmed, please come to my help. Um, the reality of it is that a lot of things can overwhelm us, right? Grief, guilt, grudges, worry, responsibility, circumstances, all of that can overwhelm us. And so the question is, as I've been praying this year for, as I pray about what to share from others that were sharing with the board that I felt that there is this feeling of overwhelm, not just for mothers, but in general with people. And, and so I want us to look at, since it's Mother's Day, the most famous mother ever, okay? The mother of Jesus, Martha. Uh, sorry, Mary. So the most famous mother ever, Luke chapter 1. So we're going to talk about Mary, Luke chapter 1. And, and here is what it says. God sent the angel Gabriel to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. I want you to pay attention to the next two words. Confused and disturbed. Mary tried to think of what the angel could mean. Put yourself in the context. Hail, highly favored woman, you know. And the Bible says she was confused and disturbed. And so she was trying to think, what could the angel mean? Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for God has decided to bless you. Now, let me, let me give you some context to the passage. When all of this happened to Mary, she was at the most 13 or 14, right? She was a young teenager, and in those days, marriages were arranged, right? And here she is engaged to be married to Joseph, and Joseph probably had been picked out for her. So this is a young teenage girl 
the angel shows the angel shows up and and he says to her um i know you've never been with anybody but 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 you you you're about to be pregnant and god will be inside of you that's Okay, I, I'm just, just trying to get you to context. Because sometimes we read the passage and we just get the magnificent part of it. Yeah. Young teenage girl, you're about to get pregnant. You're going to give birth to the Son of God. And, I mean, think about it. If it was you, how, maybe not you because you're spiritual. But what if your teenage daughter came home and said, whilst I was at the mall <laughs> and an angel, I was on my phone. And then it was like the phone just flew away. An angel showed up, and here is what he said to me. I mean, most probably you either call the pastor or the, the counselor. Like you, you know, or you know, you get what I'm saying. And so the Bible says she's confused and disturbed. Duh. Um, and I, I I would take, I would put overwhelmed. <laughs> With that news, she was overwhelmed, and she's thinking about, man, how am I going to deal with this? I mean, there's a whole lot of things that could have happened to Mary. First, she was thinking about the fear of criticism. What is everybody going to think? Then there's the fear of the supernatural. I know we're Christians, but you know a lot of Christians are fearful of the supernatural. If the piano started playing, I would look at Brother Kalen, and if his hands are not on that piano... No, I would, I would fall down in worship. But some of you, some of you would be freaked out. I mean, you, and there is a few of us who'd grab their phones. But so, so there is this fear of the supernatural. She's thinking, exactly how is it going to happen? What's going to happen to my body? And there's also, so, so when, when you're overwhelmed, you feel critis- there's a fear of criticism. There's a fear of the supernatural because when you feel overwhelmed, and the reason why we have a hard time trusting God is because, well, can he really do the supernatural? There's, a, there's that fear there. But there's also the fear of inadequacy. I'm sorry, I'll be the mother of who? The son of who? Do you mean God as in Jehovah? Right, and so there was that fear of, of 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 being inadequate, which I think most women, most mothers, could relate to. But there's also the fear of change. How is this pregnancy going to change my life? And and so she was overwhelmed. And so 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 whether you're overwhelmed because of death, whether you're overwhelmed because of fatigue or stress or responsibilities, some of us might do the same thing Mary did when we ought to do rather the same thing that Mary did when she got overwhelming news. All right. Here, here's the thing. She was overwhelmed when the angel came to her, but the angel said, Mary, you're going to be blessed. In other words, he said, for God has decided to bless you. Are you following me? Here's an important principle. When you feel overwhelmed is often right before you're about to be blessed. When you feel confused and disturbed and frustrated, it's oftentimes right before you're about to be blessed. So if you feel overwhelmed today, congratulations, you're about to be blessed. But between the congratulations and the realization, I want to give you some points. So here's the first, the first point. When you are overwhelmed, what you want to do is resist the urge to control the situation. Okay? Resist the urge to control the situation. Because typically, the more out of control we feel, the more overwhelmed we feel, the more we redouble our efforts, right? The the, the more you try to control things more, the more out of control you feel, you become um, uh, hyper-controlling or micromanage. And so most, and, and by the way, all that does is just create extra stress. The more you try, the harder you try to control things that are uncontrollable, the more overwhelmed you would feel. And, and have you realized that most of life is out of your control? Most of life you can't figure out. I don't like this part of the Bible, but I find God glories in, 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 in concealing things. The Bible, the Bible tells us that. Now, now, he glories in revealing things, but he also gets glory in concealing things. God intentionally sometimes does not tell us certain things about life. Why? Because he wants us to rely on him. He wants us to depend on him. Uh, so, so, so here's what's, there are some things you're just not going to figure out. You've got to let go of the control. So look at verse, Luke chapter 1, verse 34 and 37. Here's what he says. Mary asked the angel, but how can I have a baby? I'm a virgin. 
The angel replied, nothing is impossible with God. Okay, this is a typical reaction, though, when, when you feel overwhelmed, right? How? Um, how in the world will I get all this done? How in the world am I going to be able to make the payment? How will I solve this problem? How? how, how, how? I mean, Mary, 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 notice, Mary did not doubt what the angel said. We're still good? She didn't doubt what the angel said. She was puzzled. She didn't doubt it was going to happen. She was puzzled. And so the angel's response, if you notice, was not to give Mary a detailed explanation of how how it's going to happen. Here's what the angel says. Nothing is impossible with God. And in other words, the angel was saying, Mary, God can do anything. He can do everything. So don't sweat it. Just let go of your need for control. Here's the principle. Whatever is bugging you in your life right now, whatever is bugging you, because it's something you cannot control, God's in control. It may be out of your control, but not out of God's control. Are you following me? Your future, you can't control it. You may be worried about it. You may be worried about your children's future, but it is not out of God's control. When Mary understood this concept, she stopped worrying and she started trusting. Notice what the angel says in Luke chapter 1, verse 38. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. I am willing to accept whatever he wants. Now, now notice, notice the submission. Notice the attitude of surrender. I am willing to accept whatever he wants. May everything you have said come true. What is Mary saying? I'm giving up control. I yield to you, God. I surrender to your will. In other words, I give up. There's a word for that. It's called faith and surrender. She, she's saying, God, I don't know what you're going to do, but I trust you. Listen, do you know that's a very hard thing to do? Don't let any real, don't let any Christian fool you into thinking that surrendering and trusting to God is easy. You can fast 24-7. You can know all of the scripture. It is not easy to surrender to God. Especially for some people. You know some people are like control freaks. They desire to control everything around them because they just know if I control it, it's going to be better. I mean, if everybody else would just let you rule the world, the world would be perfect. If everybody in your family would do it your way, life would be perfect. For people like that, there's a, there's a verse in the Bible just for you. There is. I'm going to read it for you. And I'm going to read it from the message translation of the Bible. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. For people who are like control freaks who got to be in charge of everything, who thinks if everybody listens to you, the world will be better. If you know somebody like, just accidentally send them that, that text. Just, just find a meme of it or whatever it is and just send them. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Here's another scripture that is really cool that I want you to look at. Psalm 138 verse 8. The Lord will work out his plans for my life. Now, now that's interesting because if I were to be honest with you, when I read it originally, you know you read something and your brain has a way of reading, but then what's there is not what your brain reads. Okay, so notice what it says. The Lord will work out his plans. Oh, his plans. In my mind, I thought it was my plans. Because when I read it, my mind said, oh, yeah, 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 he's going to do that for me because I want it. Why would he not? But it says he will work out his plans for me. And so, 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 so listen, and, and again, God's plans for your life will sometimes be painful. Don't, 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 don't be deceived. But God's plans for your life are always better and they're always bigger. I mean, think about it, right? Um, um, does the cross remind us of anything? God brought good out of the cross. Bad happened to his son. He didn't stop it. So, so, so we don't have to figure everything out. We just have to trust God. You're still good? 
Okay. All right. So, so, so this panel here, I, I wanted them to relate this point to the mothers because it's Mother's Day. So, who goes first? Come on, yes. Going first. Um, so, it's been my experience that mothers who were older than me and they had to send their kids off to college and whatnot, and they'd, they'd have a breakdown. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I wanted to do things differently, not perfectly. And so, I started uh, creating an, an idea of milestones in the children's lives. So like when they were 13, um, they had to make their own doctor's appointment. But it, I didn't just hear, make your appointment. You know, I trained them. This is how you do it. They had it on uh, the dial, uh, on the speakerphone. Mm. So they had my presence there. And if there was a question they didn't know how to answer, um, then I'd be there to give them the answer kind of thing. So it, everything was a little bit of the letting go um, throughout their lives. Mm. Lo and behold, though, my, my child, my first child went to college, and what does mom do? She cries. <laughs> 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 so, mm. so a purposeful milestone establishing of starting to let go when they're younger. Mm -hmm. And the other thing in letting go is, um, so, well, I, at heart, I'm a counselor. And so I like to give advice. I think it's not just the counselor in me. I think it's the mom in me. And I've heard sometimes the word said, Mom, I don't need Dr. Phil. <laughs> 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 so another way of surrendering control to me is um, shutting up. Being quiet. Yeah. Wow. That's better. Yeah. Any mothers here agree? <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm yes, going to continue from uh, where uh, Rev stopped. Mm -hmm. You know, she talked about, um, you know, when the child went to school, she cried. <laughs> <laughs> Still crying? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, when Danica had to go to school, I mean, and you, you said something that just dawned on me, you know, that letting them do things, you know, gradually. Mm -hmm. I was doing that, but maybe I wasn't thinking about going to school. I was just like, okay, you're mm -hmm, growing up, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. But of course, when she had to uh, leave to go to Montreal, it was hard. But what helped me was letting go. Mm. You know, like I said, you know what? I'll do, I've done what I could, or mm -hmm. I'll continue to do what I can, but God is in control, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. And that just gave me an overwhelming peace that, you mm -hmm. know, just made it so much easier because. Uh, it's absolutely in God's hands, and mm. yeah. So, so you you, go. you find that transferring that trust or that need to control to the Lord helps you absolutely. Release them. Yes, mm -hmm. that is it. That was it. Just like you know, let it go. You've done your part. You're going to do your part. You pray. Mm -hmm. You've done what you, you know, showing mm -hmm. good examples. Mm -hmm. But now you have to let God just mm -hmm. be in control. And I thank God it's been a, a wonderful ride. All thank right. God, yeah. All right. <laughs> and Ruth. Well, I agree that you need to let go because there are times when you feel that you cannot, you can't do everything. You're human. Mm -hmm. You're still human. Mm -hmm. You did not ascend to the skies. <laughs> 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 so, um, what I wanted to share with you is just something that happened to me. Mm. And uh, some of you may relate to it because we think that when things happen to us, it should go that way and not the other way. 20, well, 2000. I was pregnant with my second child. I'm very conscious of the fact that some people are trying to get pregnant and you may be having trouble. Um, I always had been praying about, God, about having children. It was, to me, mm -hmm. it was like, I have to have children. You know, it's like a must. But we have to remember to let God take control. Mm -hmm. So, I'm pregnant and I started losing on the baby. So, started bleeding and uh, started praying end up in the hospital, and they're telling me that the baby's going to pass, the baby's no longer viable, or will no longer be viable. Mm. Now, I am praying, yes, but I am controlling. Mm. Right? It's like, you know, I'm not giving everything up. I'm not surrendering all. I'm still saying to God, I want this baby. <laughs> this is my baby. I don't know if I can have another baby. I'm having this one. 
right? The woman in you in control. <laughs> the woman in you. <laughs> <laughs> then after that, like the next day or so, or the day or two days later, I'm still beating. Doctor came in, give me the date for theater. For the theater is surgery, right? Where you have to go and have this the the surgery done. And I just gave. I'm like, but wait. This is controlled by God. Mm. He is creating this baby. He knows my body. What am I fighting for? Mm -hmm. What am I trying to hold on to? And I broke down. And I started crying and asking God to forgive me. And I just started praising God. The baby is here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the baby is here today. Mm -hmm. So surrender. Surrender works. We have to surrender because we don't know God's plan. He knew that he was going to be born. He mm -hmm. knew I was going to surrender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that. So we have to listen to what God is saying to us and obey. Mm -hmm. Surrender. Mm -hmm. Leave the control. You said the second baby? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have a question for you. Everybody's so good. I have a question for you, Sister Atta. Um, Caitlin, please behave yourself. Now all of these ladies have mother stories to tell. Um, your mic is on? No, it's not. Push the thing. There we go. All right. Okay. Um, but mm -hmm. I don't want to forget the non-mothers. Yes. When we talk about the need for control. Yes. And, and, and if, you, if we take out the baby part that Mary was supposed to happen, mm -hmm. was supposed to experience, God was, the angel was essentially saying, I need you to give me control of your life. Mm. Like it's not just the baby part. Yes. Right? Um, as a not so long ago single woman, yeah. <laughs> and a recently married woman, mm -hmm. and a pre-pregnant woman, mm. um, <laughs> you see Auntie Mofa said amen. Yeah, no. Um, doesn't the scripture say call those things that are not as yeah. though they are? Okay, so so don't don't blame me for being biblical. Um, but what do you say to women where that mm. issue of giving God the control is a real issue? Um, I I, th I think that you have to come to a place where you realize God is trustworthy. Mm. Um, um, and 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 that only happens I find by experience. Mm. Um, I think God calls us to have faith in him, uh -huh. um, to like believe even though it doesn't make any sense that he will do something. But that faith always, um, if we stick with it, it always bears fruit. Uh -huh. And when you see God come true, you know something about God that's not just somebody said it, but something that is personal to you. Uh -huh. And so when the next thing comes along, you have a little bit more faith. You know, the mm -hmm. Bible says, like, if faith as small as the mustard seed. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have to cultivate that faith. You water it, and then it grows, and you replant it, and et cetera. And so all those experiences all culminate to a point where you trust God. God is mm -hmm. worthy of trust. And if he is worthy of trust, then when he says he's working out his plans towards mm. your life, even though they're mm. not, it's not your timing, mm -hmm. not what you would have for mm -hmm. you, yourself, mm -hmm. um, it's important to remember that he's trustworthy. That's right. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this. Um, um, we'll be done on time. We have a, we'll be done by one, that's for sure. I promise you that. One thirty, no later than 2. Um, but Brother Stefan, it, 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 and, and those of you that are online, we appreciate you. But if you live in the city of Ottawa, you should be in church. Um, um, because because I, I, I'm trying to find a way to engage everybody. But it reminds me of a conversation that Brother Stefan and I were having. I uh, remember we were, we were talking about this faith issue. Um, and, and faith, um, it, it, it must be built on a statement of belief. That is the scripture that is trustworthy, but sometimes we miss that experience part. Yeah. You see, and so, so my faith in God is largely based on my faith that my grandmother experienced. Yeah. You see, because I've seen faith at work, and so mothers don't dismiss that. Remember what I said: you'd be the first God. You are the parents of the first God that children will ever see. And so, how you reflect God determines the depth and the quality of their faith. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, let me give you point number two. Did you enjoy that first section? 
It's Shiloh. We want to be relevant, and and I, I, you know, I'm not the only one that hails from the Lord. So, so I thought it would be good to have some more contributions. All right, let me give you the second point. So, so what's the first point? Resist the urge to control. Here's the second point. Realize the importance of people around you. Realize the importance of people around you. Here's what I mean. So first you let go of control, but then you got to let other people help out. You have to let other... Now, now, of course, that's the opposite of what we tend to do, isn't it? That's the opposite of what we tend to do. When people, when we get overwhelmed, what do we often do? We withdraw from relationships. If some of us are honest, when we get overwhelmed, we pull back, we isolate ourselves, we, we tell people, leave me alone. You don't have to say those words, but you tell people, leave me alone, right? You don't want to be on, you don't want to be on anybody. Um, 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 you, you know, in other words, you just want to cry in your own beer. If you drink beer, you shouldn't. But, you know, you know when, you, when, you, when you feel overwhelmed, sometimes you just want to hunker in your own bunker. I know, I know. It's, it's. But as a pastor, I see it all the time. People start having a problem in their life, and they start pulling out of church. They start pulling out of friendships. They start backing away from the things that they know they need the most, especially other people. Here is what Mary did, though. Luke chapter 1, verse 39. Remember, we're learning from Mary? Okay, here's what it did. Mary didn't waste a minute. She got up. And traveled to a town in Judah, in the hill country, straight to Zechariah's house, and she greeted Isabel. Uh, Isabel, Elizabeth. <laughs> she greeted Elizabeth. Elizabeth, you would remember, was Mary's cousin. Okay, but that's not what's important. What's important is what Elizabeth was. Not who she was, but what she was. Can I tell you what Elizabeth was? She was a godly woman. Okay? She was married to a priest. Kind of like Sister Nelly. Um, and, and Zachariah was, 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 a, was, was, was a, the name of, of the, the priest. And, and she was a godly woman. Here's why that's important. She could pray for Mary. Okay? And that's a good thing. Secondly, she was an older woman. I hope you're following what I'm, what I'm trying to show you, okay? You, you, you realize the importance of other people. She was a godly woman. She was an older woman, and, and, and an older woman um, that had more life experience. Why? So she could give wise advice to Mary. Do you know people can give you advice? Not every advice is wise. Many people can give you advice, but not every. And here's the third thing that happened with, 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 with Mary as it relates to Elizabeth. She was also pregnant. Elizabeth was also pregnant. As a matter of fact, Elizabeth was pregnant with her own um, uh, miracle pregnancy, right? She had her own supernatural thing that she had, um, that she had experienced. And so um, she was wise, she was godly, um, but she was a bit further ahead um, than Mary, who was now brand new pregnant. Here's the point. When you're overwhelmed, you need to find an Elizabeth. You need an Elizabeth in your life. So what does that mean when I talk about Elizabeth, right? I want to be very clear. When I talk about people around you, you need a strong believer in your life. Somebody who is a strong believer. Somebody who can be your spiritual partner, your mentor, your co-associate. Somebody who is a little bit older than you. So they have a bit more experience than you've had. Somebody who's, who, who, who's, who's, who's a little bit further along um, than you. By the way, this is not just true for, for women, but also for men. Guys need partners as well. Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. You are better off to have a friend than to be alone. If you fall, your friend can help you up. But if you fall down without a friend nearby, you're in real trouble. And can I tell you when is a good time to build friendship? Before the crisis comes. You, you ought to get connected before the inevitable happens. Everybody's not, we're all going to face death at some point. We're all going to face some kind of sickness, some kind of crisis. Um, but it's good to build the friendships before. As a matter of fact, it's not optional to have friends. It's commanded. Galatians chapter 6. 
share each other's troubles and problems. So obey the Lord's command. It's a command. You must have biblical friendships. All right. And I hope you get my point that I'm trying to say you were not meant to go through life on your own. Right. Did you get it? Okay, ladies. Any thoughts? Well, not any thoughts. You have to have thoughts. Go ahead, Ray. Um, it's been my experience that learning from other people's mistakes is uh, less painful mm-hmm. than learning from my own. Mm-hmm. So that means, though, we have to dialogue. Mm-hmm. I need to hear your story. You need to hear mine. Mm-hmm. Part of my story as a mother is that um, I did not like being a mother of young children. Mm. I did not enjoy that time at all. <laughs> I had good moments, but when I look back, it wasn't yay. Mm-hmm. And I kept that to myself for many years. So I lived in shame because of it. Like, what kind of mother am I to think these things, right? Finally, I, I spoke to someone. And that person, do you know what their response was? It, they weren't like, oh, I can't believe you said that. Mm-hmm. Their response was, more people need to hear that. Mm-hmm. Because it's okay to feel that way. Mm-hmm. So because I spoke with someone, they were able to pray for me. They were able to encourage me and, and tell me, it's okay you feel that way. Mm-hmm. What are you doing about it? Mm-hmm. Right? There were some, some issues I had to look at from the past. There was... Um, it's like pressing on. You just you keep going, mm-hmm. and eventually it got better because they weren't they don't stay <laughs> <laughs> they little. Mm-hmm. They yeah. grew. All right. Anybody else? Go ahead, Sister Ada. Your mic is on. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If only my mom could see me now. Um, all right. <laughs> I was just going to say, <laughs> um, I think a lot of the time when we don't like to ask for help, I think sometimes it does come from like a place of trauma. Um, and, and I think uh, it's very important um, um, to not let things that have happened in the past hold you back from moving forward in the future. And I think it's one of the things and the ways that the enemy holds us bound a lot of the time. I know that's been my experience in the past um, because I refuse to expose something or because I'm unwilling um, to be vulnerable enough to let somebody else look into my situation, I can tend to close up about it. And then I find myself compounding my own problems because now they're going around like this in my head. I found liberty in speaking to all um, other older Christians about it. And, and Pastor taught, has taught us something. You say it all the time, but you say confess your faults one to another, not so that you would be forgiven, not because you're horrible, or so that you would be judged, but so that you would be healed. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's super important. Mm-hmm. What makes it hard, particularly, I find, don't throw stones, but what makes it hard for, for women, and I'm asking anybody, is it, <laughs> how do I ask this in a nice way? Is it, is it fair to say that sometimes women have a hard time trusting each other? Yes? yes? Okay. Okay, if you agree, just, if you're a lady and you think it's hard for women to trust each other, just raise your hands, kids. Okay, because I didn't hear that much yes. I wonder why. Do, do you ladies, do you have something to add on this point? Maybe not on the why, but anything at all. Yeah, uh, I'm going to say um, it's very important to have uh, like minds, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, it's good to have people in your life that you can talk to. But mm-hmm. it's also very important that there are people who share your values, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, understand where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. So that way, you don't feel so vulnerable, right? Mm-hmm. And also, when you speak, it's like you're speaking the same language. Okay. So it's mm-hmm. so that is very important. Mm-hmm. But yes, you can do life by yourself. By yourself. Definitely. What makes it hard for, for women, just a few words, to trust other women? 
I've got one. Yes, Sister Sam. Fear of judgment. Okay, that that that's a very good point. Yes, ma'am. Comparison. Oh, yeah. I think is yeah, looking at each other. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Confidentiality. Nice. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yep, yep, yep. All right. Okay, we're good. I'm gonna move on. Okay. Let me give you the last point, and then we'll send you home. Receive strength from God. Receive strength from God. Um, so, resist the urge to control the situation. Now, I say motherhood, but this is life. Huh? Um, men needs this as well. And by the way, that's why, brothers, we're coming on Friday to, to, re- to recognize, because we realize we need people in our lives. We want to receive strength from God. Uh, I'm sorry, the third point is receive strength from God. Now, now, here's the thing. Some of us know God will give us strength, but we won't let him in. Um, we act as though it all depends on us. And, and it's like we're saying, it's up to me, you know. And, and, and if, you, if, you, if you're really biblical, you'll say words like God helps those who help themselves. Which, of course, is not even in the Bible. Ben Franklin said it, right? Um, and, and so when you think about this 13 or 14-year-old girl, Mary, um, she was blown away by these overwhelming circumstances, um, but she was able to be relatively grounded because she knew the promises of God and she claimed them. Okay, this, this is something that, that um, uh, uh, the Bible says at verse 45, talking about Mary. Luke chapter 1, verse 45. You are blessed for believing that the Lord will keep his promise to you. Okay, now that's what he says to her. Mary clearly was calm. She was composed because she had the promises of God in her heart, and that gave her strength. That gave her hope. And, and, and one of the greatest promises that you want to hold on to in life, no matter what you will face, is found in Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 2. When you pass through the deep waters, I will be with you. When you, your troubles will not overwhelm you. When you pass through the fire, you will not be burned. The hard trials that come will not hurt you. Why? On your, on your own strength, you may drown when the flood comes but not in God's strength. The question is, how did Mary get that kind of strength? There are people that I know, whether it's Reverend Lorraine or Sister Lindsay or Sister Michelle or, or, or Sister Ada, there are people uh, that I know, or Deacon Wilson or Deacon Dawkins, there are people that I know um, that we've seen this walked out. These two areas where you get strength from. One is by praising God for his goodness. One way to get strength is by praising God for his goodness. I mean, there is enormous power in praise, okay? And, and try it. It works. In the middle of an overwhelming situation, just stop and begin to praise God for his goodness. And you'll be amazed as to what would happen. Look at it, verse, Luke chapter 1, 46 to 47. Mary responded, oh, how I praise the Lord. Remember the context. She's still in this confused and disturbing situation. And she says, oh, how I praise the Lord, how I rejoice in God, my Savior. And another way that you get strength from the Lord is by taking in God's word. Now, this I left this for last because this is not the fun part. But you cannot not take in God's word. A lot of people just read God's word because they want to be approved by God. God's not interested in in approving you based on reading his word. He's interested in approving you based on you living out his word. He's more interested in you obeying his word, not just quoting his word. And so praise and taking in the word is important. And and as I was thinking about this, and I shared this with the ladies, there's so much that you see from the passage. Look at Luke chapter 2 verse 19. Mary quietly treasured these things in her heart, and she thought about them often. She thought about God's words. If you read the rest of the chapter, you would realize the rest of chapter 2 that Mary writes a song. And then when you read the, the whole song that she writes, it's called the Magnificat. And you realize that this woman knew the Old Testament. She knew the word of God because she quotes it extensively in her writing, in, 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 that, in that psalm. And so, why is it important? Why is it important to study, to memorize the Word? Um, um, Why? Because the Bible helps you sort out what's really important in life. The Bible will help you sort out what's really important in life. Okay, 
Um, ladies, let's wrap this up, and I need your best thoughts now. And don't, don't, don't act like, you know, you don't know we're going to talk about this. So go ahead, t start talking now. So if you want to have God's strength, mm -hmm. if you want him to listen, mm -hmm. you need to be open. Mm -hmm. You need to be vulnerable. Ooh. You come before God, and you say exactly how you feel. Mm -hmm. You don't care if it sounds rough, it sounds funny, mm -hmm. it sounds strange. <laughs> you just tell him. Because mm -hmm. I have been in those situations where I'm just stressed out and it's too much. I can't handle it. This happened today and I'm, I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. I'm a Christian, yes, but I'm not happy right now. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I go to God and I say, I close the bedroom door. Mm -hmm. And I kneel down and say, God, this is what's happening. I'm bawling. I'm crying. Mm -hmm. Ball is to cry. Cry loudly. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's the Caribbean way. I cry out to him. I say, God, I don't like this. I don't like how I feel. And I need you to help me. This is what I'm going through. And I say exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, then God wouldn't know. Not know, meaning that he knows all things. You know, he wants you to expose yourself to him. He mm -hmm. wants you to come to him. Say, okay, she's humble. She mm -hmm. really wants mm -hmm. me to listen to this. I need to pay attention. Mm -hmm. And I cry out to him. And I don't care if the children are in the other room and they're hearing me. I don't care. <laughs> I'm talking to God. Mm -hmm. I'm praying to him. I'm letting him know what's happening. And I'm asking him to help mm -hmm. and to intervene. Mm -hmm. And I find if we do that more, and I, sh I think I should do that some more. <laughs> but if we do it more as mothers, I think, well, I know. The devil be running more than he's walking. Mm. So Preach. <laughs> That's what I think, you know, we should do. And that's how I think God hears and understands us. Amen. Amen. I want to second that one. <laughs> um, all of my mothering was done with the help of the Holy Spirit. I had a broken mom. Uh, I think most parents, if, if, if you haven't gone through emotional healing, all parents come with baggage because... We're human beings. Mm -hmm. We get hurt. Life throws those sticks at us, right? Mm -hmm. And so having, uh, I, I didn't have the example I wanted of mothering. So I had to trust the Holy Spirit to guide me. Mm -hmm. He knew what I could handle and what I couldn't handle. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I'll give you like a practical um, example. Is um, So I came in, I became a parent, but I had baggage in me. And I had a strong-willed child who actually got really mad at me and yelled no, okay? And I was like, <gasps> like that was the first time it happened, okay? Young child, I wanted, oh, I wanted to do harm. <laughs> <laughs> Mama bear, oh yeah, she's in me. <laughs> so what I did, because I knew this is wrong, I ran, ran all the way to my bedroom. I locked the door so that nobody can come in. I got on my knees, face planted on my bed, and I said, God, what is happening to me? And then I knew this has to be tied into something that I was hurting from. So I stayed, like I told him, I, this is how I feel, blah, 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 blah. And then I waited. And then he showed me I was never allowed to say no mm. without ex extremely bad uh, circumstances mm -hmm. growing up. So when he said no to me, it triggered the, that's not fair. Right. How can he do it and I can't? Mm. So I stayed there and I said, God, okay, thank you. Now I understand those huge emotions. They, they go there. What do I do with him now? He gave me, I wish I could remember, he gave me like a, a consequence to give him, but one that was like, genius <laughs> and it wasn't like I was able to go back down there and say okay this is how it's gonna go <laughs> and calmly and just lovingly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. respond mm -hmm. to the situation so yeah going God's strength on your knees Holy Spirit led amen mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um it, <laughs> Actually, I'm going to put you on the spot. Yes, sir. Um, because I don't want to exclude. It's very intentional for me. Because women make mothers. Does yes. that make sense? Before you're a mother, you should be a woman. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, that's how it happens. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Margaret, for getting the joke. <laughs> um, and I think healthy women, I think, would make healthier moms. Does that mean? By the way, Mommy Rhonda, it's good to see you. 
I feel like it's the first Sunday. Um, <laughs> um, um, yeah, and so if some women have, they have to learn on the job, but maybe some could learn ahead. Um, you've had some situations in life, not having your mom there, where this idea of needing God's strength was not optional for you. Yeah. You know, some, fo- some of us could lean on daddy, lean on mommy. Um, and, and I think that's evident in your life. I think most of us would agree. I think that's probably fueled your love for God. And, and it's obvious that you have a, a, a thing about the word of God, which is good. Mm-hmm. Um, um, tell us how this helped. Or, or, or Does this make sense? Is it helpful? Is it real? Yes. Um, like you say, I did lose my mother young. Mm-hmm. Um, I was 14 when she died. Um, and I, <laughs> I wish I was all that happened, but I will suffice it to say that everything changed mm-hmm. from that moment on. Um, when I got saved, I was about 17, 18. It was about like three, four years after my mom had died. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it started there. Mm-hmm. Because my conversion was real and intimate. I remember being sat in church. um, And someone was um, talking about what Jesus did on the cross for me. And as I was sat on my chair, it was almost as if I could see. It was like I was in the crowd that day. And I could see Jesus on the cross. And it was almost like through the crowd, like through the millions of people, that he saw me exactly and that he called me exactly and that he drew me Mm. exactly Mm -hmm. um and so there was like a very and like to 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 put it in context like i grew up in a in a loud house 15 20 people i went to boarding school i was always with my book like my head in a book and so that sort of personal knowing of god it was like i was seen clearly Mm -hmm. That changed my life. Um, and then throughout all of the hardships of life, I, God has always pursued me. There's an encounter, my favorite encounter in the whole Bible so far. I haven't read all the pages yet, but, you know, my favorite yeah. encounter in the Bible so far is the encounter of the woman um, at the well. And as part of she's arguing with Jesus about something, and it's kind of what you were talking about, about the freedom to say no. But she's talking back and forth with Jesus. It's so fascinating to me. Um, And then she's trying to explain to Jesus how, you know, what she's worshiping and who she worships and what she knows is, is best and makes sense. And Jesus tells her, well, you worship what you don't know and you don't understand. Um, and then he says, the time is coming and now is when those who worship me will worship me in spirit and in truth. Um, and the Lord led me to this passage in the scripture. The Bible says the word of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. You Worship does something to us where it shifts our focus off of ourselves. Um, there's a story in the Bible where um, the children of Israel did something bad again, and they were bit by serpents, and Jesus, uh, or God told Moses to, to raise up like a bronze serpent, and he told all of them to look up on the serpent. And it was almost like Moses didn't go over to everybody, um, healing everybody. God said, let them come to me. Let them shift their focus off of the snake bites. And let them look up to me. And that's what worship does. It wasn't, it was in the looking up, in the changing their focus um, from themselves onto God Mm -hmm. that they were healed. But you have to remember that you can't effectively worship someone you don't know and you can't know God without the word of God. And so those two things always work in tandem with each other. It's like as you draw your focus off of yourself and onto God, something happens and you are changed and you are healed. But you need more of God. You need to understand. You need to know him. And you can't do that without what he's exposed in his word. And so those two things, I think, have changed my life and have given me the strength to bear some not-so-nice things Mm -hmm. (laughs) over the course of my life. Mm -hmm. You got the words for that song? Yes. She's going to sing. Um... And, and we'll wrap it up. I hope you mothers, you, you feel the service was worth it. Um, and, and hopefully you, you had found this to be a blessing. Um, um, did you find this to be a blessing? 
Let me give them the three points, brother, and they'll just put it on there. Receive the urge to control the situation. Realize the importance of people around you. Receive strength from God. Listen, these ladies who are up here, if you need prayer for whatever reason after church, find them wherever they are and just ask them to pray for you, whether you're a man or a woman. Um, and when you practice these things, um, um, you develop the attitude of a guy in the Bible. These three things, you develop the attitude of a guy in the Bible named Micah. Show me that last scripture. Here, here's Micah. Here's what he says. I'm overwhelmed with sorrow, sunk in a swamp of despair. But me, I'm not giving up. I'm sticking around to see what God will do. Father, we pray for those I'm who waiting today may feel overwhelmed. for God to make things right. Overwhelmed with responsibility. And that's, that's the kind of attitude that I want you to have. That's the kind of attitude you will have deadlines, when you follow these people who are I believe by that worries, by plagued by problems. Help them to experience new strength and energy today. Teach each one of us to stop trying to control the uncontrollable. Forgive us for all the times we've acted like it all depends on us. Help us to let go of pride and allow other people to help us. Help us to remain connected to you, to your family, the family of God, so that we can receive support and give it to others. Help us to remember to praise you and to think about your word, especially when we feel overwhelmed. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Come, let's clap for the Lord. Mothers, may you have clarity of thought and many morsels of sanity in your daily living. May you know that God's grace is enough for every season, every tantrum, every question, and every failure. May you always feel empowered to love your children the way God asks you to, the way they deserve to be loved, and the way you want to love them. May you feel equipped to tackle every challenge, every situation, and every day with courage and joy, even if you have to start over 10 times by 10 a.m. May excitement fill your heart every morning for all that each day can be. Mothers, may you always know that your children are your treasure, and each day is a gift that you should fully embrace. May you lay your head down at night with a heart that is bursting with memories too plentiful to count. May you know joy unspeakable at the end of many days. And for us all, may the grace and the peace of God who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, may he equip us with everything good that we need to do his will, working in us that which pleasing in his sight through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And every blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is upon you and with you, now and forever. If you receive it in Jesus' name, would you say amen? We have an anchor.